I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be my 5 stars prediction in the year 2023. Just like last year, these 10 books are books that I think I will definitely read within this year and I think there's a really good chance they will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me. Obviously, if possible, I want every book I read to receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating, but that's impossible. And although I do give a lot of 4 or even 4.5 stars rating, relatively I don't give that many 5 out of 5 stars rating. And before I get to talking about these 10 books that I predict will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating in 2023, allow me to talk briefly about the result of my 5 stars prediction in the year 2022. And as it turns out, I'm not too good at this game. I got 6 out of 10 prediction correct. The Bladed Fate by David Dalglish. I didn't get this one correct, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars rating, but for The Jade Setter of Jan Lun by Fondali, Babel by RF Kuang, and also The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu, I got these three correct. Well, technically, if possible, I want to give a 6 out of 5 stars rating to The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. That was my favorite book of last year. But for the next three books in my 2022 5 stars prediction, I was really counting on them being a 5 stars read, but as it turns out, it didn't happen. These three books are The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn and then Until the Last by Mike Shackle, and finally A Clash of Fates by Philip C. Quintrell. I gave these three books 4.5 out of 5 stars. I still love them, but I don't think they were amazing enough to receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating. I think many of you know how much I love John Gwynn's book already, and if it's really up to me, up to my bias, I would instantly give The Hunger of the Gods a 5 out of 5 stars rating. But I have to always be honest with my rating and review, so yeah, I gave these three books a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I still love them, but as I said, they weren't that amazing enough to receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating. And finally, the last three books in my 5 stars prediction list in the year 2022, these are for Locklands by Robert Jackson Bennett, and then Prince of Crowns by Peter McLean, and finally The Lost Metal by Brendan Sanderson. For these three, I got my prediction correct. I love them very much, and all three of them are included in my list of favorite books of the year. So yeah, in total, I got 6 out of 10 predictions correct. I actually thought that I would do better than this. I predicted that I would get probably 8 out of 10 correct. So let's see if I can do better this year. And at the end of this video, I will talk briefly about my channel goal for this year. Now let's begin my 5 stars prediction for the year 2023. These are 10 books that I think will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating this year. And the first one is The Shadow Casket by Chris Wooding. This is the sequel to The Ember Blade, the long-awaited sequel to The Ember Blade, which I think is still one of the most underrated fantasy books uh, out there. I'm going to do a second read of The Ember Blade really soon after I'm done with reading Of War and Ruin by Ryan Cahill, which is super massive. But after that, I'm going to do my second read of The Ember Blade. I love this book so much and I hope that the sequel, The Shadow Casket, if it's just as any good as the first book, I think there is no doubt that it will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me again. I love Chris Wooding's book, I love his characterizations, and yeah, I hope that this one will be as good as The Ember Blade. And my next prediction is for The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stewart. This is the third and final book in the Drowning Empire trilogy, or the Drown Empire trilogy. I love The Bone Shard Daughter, I also will do a second read of The Bone Shard Daughter. I was going to do a second read of The Bone Shard Daughter uh, within this month, but I don't think that will be possible because January is almost at an end. But but yeah, I love The Bone Shard Daughter. It is one of my favorite debut. I hope that The Bone Shard War, the third and final book in the series, will deliver a fine conclusion to the series. And my third prediction is for The Will of the Many by James Islington. This is the first book in his new series. And just with the Lycanius trilogy, just with that three books, James Islington has instantly become one of my favorite authors because I love the Lycanius trilogy so much. I think it is one of the best trilogy out there. And after I finished The Light of All That Falls, the final book in the trilogy, I knew immediately that I want to read every book published by James Islington. And The Will of the Many will be the first book by him outside of the Lycanius trilogy. So pumped for this one. And I will keep my fingers crossed that this one will be as good as the Lycanius trilogy, or even better if possible. And speaking of favorite authors, the next prediction is for The Untethered Sky by Fondali. Now this one is also the first novella or the first book by Fondali outside of the Greenbone saga. So I'm not too sure what to expect with the story here, but Fondali is one of my top favorite authors just like uh, James Islington, just with the Greenbone saga, Fondali became one of my favorite authors as well. Even though Untethered Sky doesn't take place in the Greenbone saga universe, but 
I have a good feeling that this one will deliver another amazing book for me. I love Fondali's writing and I think her storytelling style just match what I love reading. And my next prediction is for Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong, the author behind The Sword of Kaigen, which is my favorite standalone book, my favorite sub harvest fantasy book. It is truly a masterpiece. And finally, it's been four years since The Sword of Kaigen was first published. Finally, we get another adult fantasy book by M.L. Wong. This one will be a dark academia standalone a low novel suitable for fans of Full Metal Alchemist, which is, of course, one of my favorite anime and manga of all time. So I think for this one, I'm very confident this will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me. But well, it's still just a prediction. Let's see whether that will end up coming true or not. And speaking of favorite self published fantasy book, the next one doesn't have a release date yet, but I think uh, Nicholas Litzau is very confident that this one will be released within this year. So this is the sequel to Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Litzau. The title is The Cure for Living. I love Dreams of the Dying so much. I think the mental health exploration in that book is just incredibly well done. I love the characterizations. And Nicholas is uber confident that the second book, Cure for Living, is even better than Dreams of the Dying, which I already consider a masterwork in character-driven fantasy. And on the plus side, unrelated to my rating of the story, I think the book, the physical book, will be stunning again just like Dreams of the Dying. The seventh book that I predict will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me and, and this is most likely my most anticipated book of the year. This is Lightbringer by Prince Brown, the sixth book in the Red Rising Saga series. This will be the penultimate installment of the Red Rising Saga series, which currently is still my favorite sci-fi series of all time. I did not give a 5 stars rating to Dark Age. In my unpopular opinion, on my first read anyway, I think Dark Age is Pierce Brown's weakest book so far. But that's on my first time reading through it. I have mentioned my circumstance why I think it didn't work for me on my first time read. I will begin my reread of the entire series starting in the month of February. This is done in preparation for Lightbringer and I hope, I really hope that Lightbringer will be as amazing as Golden Sun, uh, Morning Star and also Iron Gold, which is another unpopular opinion of mine because I love Iron Gold and Many fans of the series consider that to be Pierce Brown's weakest book, which I disagree with. Speaking from my experience with the series, I think it is most likely that Pierce Brown will deliver another 5 stars book for me. And then for the final 3 books in my prediction, all 3, I haven't read any books by them yet. And the first one is Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. This is the first book in the Sun Eater series. I have wanted to read this series for a year now, a year or two now, ever since uh, Mike Book Review posted a review of this book and he said that this one should be suitable to those who love Red Rising with a prose similar to The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss, I knew that I have, I have to give this series a read. And it was my goal to actually start and finish this series uh, within this year, but Christopher Rocchio just mentioned that Sun Eater will be extended to 7 books long, just like Red Rising Saga. With that news out, well, it is impossible for me to finish this series uh, this year. But regardless of that, I will still start reading Sun Eater this year. Maybe read the first three books or something. I don't know, maybe even read all of them up to Ashes of Men. But yeah, I predict that Empire of Silence will be a 5 out of 5 stars read for me. Or if not, based on what I've heard so far from reviewers, I believe, and comments from viewers of my channel who knows my reading taste, I think at least one or two books in the series will receive a 5 stars rating from me. I'm so excited to read Sun Eater this year. Some readers have even mentioned that I will end up loving Sun Eater more than Red Rising Saga. That is a bold claim and I look forward to finding that out. And then the ninth book in my prediction is for Two Green Angel Tower by Tad Williams. This is the third book in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy, the famous Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy. Now, I did not choose a Dragonbone Chair specifically for the reason that people mentioned that uh, the Dragonbone Chair is a huge setup. It is a huge setup and the first half of this book can be a bit too But I think many agreed that Two Green Angel Tower, the 520,000 words novel, is the best of the trilogy and that's why I'm including Two Green Angel Tower in this list. Instead of the first book, The Dragonborn Chair, or the second book, The Stone of Farewell. But just like The Sun Eater by Christopher Bocchio, I am so excited to finally dive into Tad Williams' epic fantasy novels. I have wanted to do this for a long time now and I certainly look forward to finding out why Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy inspired so many fantasy authors. And finally, the last book or series in my 5 stars prediction for the year 2023 will be for Mother of Learning by Nobody103 or Nobagoch Kurmai. So Mother of Learning was originally published as a web novel so 
even though it is now divided into four books, four books of three arcs published by Raidmark Creative, but it is technically a one big book series divided into four. So for this one, I'm going to count Mother of Learning as a whole in my five stars prediction. I haven't read anything by the author yet, but I tend to really love time travel and time loop story done right in science fiction or in fantasy, as proven in the Lycanius trilogy by James Ellington. I love time travel. It's just that they're rarely executed correctly or powerfully in fiction, in my opinion. It is hard to do them right, but many readers have mentioned that Mother of Learning is one of the greatest time travel story in science fantasy or in fantasy. And yeah, it is one of my priority to start and finish Mother of Learning this year. I think I will start reading uh, the first arc in probably next month or maybe in March, but yeah, really soon. But that's it, that's the 10 books that I predict will receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me uh, this year, and I definitely will try to read through all of them uh, within this year. Hopefully I will have a better result than my prediction last year. Do let me know whether you've read the books that I mentioned and please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. As for my channel goal for the year 2023, I hope to post at least 100 videos this year. Now that might sound like a lot but I have succeeded in doing that for the past two years and I hope to do that again this year. And as far as subscription goes, I am always thankful to all of you who keep on supporting my channel and to all my patrons as well. You give me the necessary extra support for me to keep on continuing with my channel and my reviews and I truly appreciate that. So do know, even though I'm mentioning a goal for my YouTube channel, I am already super grateful for all the support and faith that you have in me. But for the goal of my channel this year, as far as the number of subscription goes, I hope to reach 35,000 subs by the end of this year. Last year, my goal was to reach uh, 20,000 subs and I reached that. Uh, thank you so much to all of you. I hope that I can reach 35,000 subs this year. But whether I achieve that goal this year or not, as I said, I'm already super grateful and thankful for all the support and trust that you have in my reviews and my channel. Thank you so much, really. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.